Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing a bit of a follow up to a video that I did two weeks ago on a pretty cool piece of software called Enlight. Now if you haven't seen that video I would highly recommend you go and check it out up in the cards right now so you can kind of be up to speed on what it is we're going to be talking about here today. But in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at another piece of software created by, at least to my understanding, by the same team that created Enlight, as you can see by this link up here on their uh, webpage here. And Enlight, if you uh, don't remember, was a uh, piece of software that allowed you to take a Windows XP ISO image and modify it by doing things like integrating service packs, um, making the installation process more automated. There was a lot of really cool things that you could do with that program. I then made a follow up video to that original video taking a look at the customized version of XP that I created and in today's video we're gonna be taking a look at another piece of software called NT light that is basically the same concept as N light but it's with Windows 7 and above rather than Windows XP so with this piece of software what you can do is take a Windows 7 a Windows 8 an 8.1 or even a Windows 10 ISO image and modify it. You can see here that the um, interface is a bit more modern. It's, you know, there's a lot more to it than just the simple setup wizard that Enlight had. Uh, this is kind of, it, it just, in, as you're going to see when we actually uh, take a look at this program, there is a lot of stuff that you can do with this program. Obviously, a lot of it is very similar to what Enlight could do, but this is just with Windows 7 and above rather than Windows XP. Now this is a paid piece of software, they do have a free version, if you go to the download tab right here, you can download the uh, free version, either the stable or the beta version, which I would just you know recommend using the stable version, that's what I'm currently using. But you can actually purchase a few different editions of this program right here, you can see they have a home edition, a professional version, and a business version. But they do have a free non-commercial version, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. I do want to say that I'm not being paid or sponsored by this company you know whoever out there made NT light this video is not sponsored by them enough talking let's actually go ahead and take a look at the actual piece of software right here kind of reminds me of Microsoft Office and the Windows 10 file Explorer it definitely has that uh, ribbon interface up here which is you know definitely done to make the software look a little bit more modern than Enlight, which was just a simple basic setup wizard and from in here um, when you first launch the program you're actually going to have to choose a source which is you know what you actually want this program to modify now what's interesting is it actually shows your current live install so this right here is literally my windows folder of the you know operating system that i'm booted into right now so let's actually go ahead and go through the process of creating your own customized version of windows 7 windows 8 or windows 10. So to do that, you have to go up here to the add button right here and you want to add an image directory. And you can also add an image file if you had it in one of these three file formats right here, but we're just gonna go with an image directory. Now, what you wanna do is you want to, obviously you're going to need to have an ISO file of whatever Windows version that you wanna modify. So I actually have a ISO image here of the latest version of Windows 10, the May 2019, 1903 update. And what you wanna do is open up that ISO ISO file in a um, archiving program like WinRAR or 7-Zip, and you want to actually extract all of the contents of that ISO file to a folder. So I have this NT Lite folder that I have created, and just to show you exactly what is in it, uh, this is it right here. It's literally just everything that was inside of the ISO file. I just extracted it out into a folder, and this is the exact same thing we had to do with NLite. You had to extract all of the files from this ISO file so that the program can then modify those files and then repackage it into an ISO file at the very end. So we're going to go ahead and just select this folder right here. And when you do that, it's going, you know, just for me, it's going to, um, you know, display this little error here because I already have opened this image before under the image history. So, uh, but you obviously won't get that error if you're doing this for the first time. And once the program actually recognizes everything, you're, you're going to see in my case right here, I've actually got three different options of things that I can modify. You can modify the actual operating system itself, and you can also um, change things with the pre-installation environment and the Windows setup program. So we're going to go ahead and just focus on the actual OS itself you know at least for right now we might take a look at the setup in a, uh, a little bit here but i'm just gonna go ahead and double click on this and it's going to actually mount the image all right so it is just about finished loading up here and you'll see that once it does uh, we'll have a lot more options in this left hand column over here 
So here we go. We have just finished up here with you know with the program actually loading everything. So now you can see we have all of our um, options over here of things that we can modify. They're all laid out in a very very nice and easy to use interface. So we have um, a couple of different categories here, remove, configure, integrate, automate, and finish. So under these, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, the only thing that you can remove are components. You can configure feature setting services and extra services. You can integrate updates, drivers, and registry. And you can automate, you know, make it unattended, have some post setup actions. And when you're finished, you can actually go through and uh, apply everything and have it recreate that ISO image. So we're just going to go through all of these here. We're going to start off with components because this is kind of the uh, feature that allows you to actually remove unwanted components from this ISO image right here. And when you click on this, it will come up with this uh, component removal warning dialog box right here. And this is just a warning, just kind of a heads up letting you know that if you're doing this on an offline modification, which is what we're doing right here, it says that you should test the edited image in a virtual in, uh, environment before you actually deploy this to a real machine. And you can see here that, yeah, this kind of definitely reminds me of the Nlight uh, setup process. It's very, very similar. You can go through here. You've got all of these different categories for, um, you know, different components. So let's go ahead and go under Windows apps right here. So right here are all of the Windows apps that you can remove. And this program actually takes a step further because you've got this column interface. So you not only have the component title, but you have also notes of what each of these components do and how much size in megabytes that the program or that the feature takes up. So you can see there are a lot of things right here. Let's say that we want to uncheck all of the system apps. And when we do that, it's going to come up with this um, little warning box right here. It's actually very, very oversized. But what it wants you to do is just basically um, press yes for basically every single one of these that you want to remove. We can speed this up by uh, checking this all checkbox here and press yes. And now it's actually going to remove um, everything from that uh, category here. Now we're going to try and make this a very, very minimal installation. I'm going to see how um, small that we can make this without removing every single thing. I obviously do want to keep some things in here, but things like a uh, webcam experience, we can uh, remove that. Now the things in blue, we cannot actually um, remove. And, and some of these are because that it depends on um, other programs or that these are needed for other things that you already have checked. So it's the same thing under system. We've got a lot of things that we cannot remove, but we do have some things like Hyper-V guest. Uh, we can remove that and uh, uncheck all. Um, we can remove legacy components. Um, we can remove mobile PC. We'll go ahead and uh, press that here. Recovery agent, we can remove that. Um, I mean, it's. I'm probably not going to show you guys like everything that I'm going to remove because it would just take way too long. But we can literally, literally uncheck entire category. So let's say uh, remoting and privacy. Under uh, multimedia, we can remove things like the snipping tool. We can remove other themes, uh, share media control panel. We can get rid of the wallpaper. So that's uh, enough in the components tab here. Let's go ahead and actually configure some things. So for features right here. So these right here are extra features that you can integrate into the system that are not integrated into the system by default. So for example, a huge one right here, the Windows subsystem for Linux. This is a um, feature that you can, um, you know, enable after the fact when you install Windows, but it's not enabled by default. Well, what you can do in here is check all the things that you want. That way you don't have to go through any post install uh, installation processes to actually get all of these things. So if you wanted, you know, the Windows subsystem for Linux, if you wanted the Windows sandbox, the Windows uh, projected file system, uh, the virtual machine platform, the TFTP client, you can go in here. I mean, we can even uncheck things like Internet Explorer 11. Let's say that we don't want that. Uh, let's say that we don't want a remote differential compression. So you can kind of uh, check and uncheck things in here. Definitely very, very useful. Let's go ahead under settings right here. This is where you can enable and disable specific, you know, features and settings that Windows has. Let's go under Explorer here. Um, this is extremely useful because you can basically modify uh, Windows Explorer's preferences and tweak them to your liking. So that way you don't have to, again, do it um, after you've installed. It will already be done for you. This is all about automation. That's kind of the big focus here is uh, getting this set up the way that you want it, the way that you know, you're know you used to your, your Windows install being and having it automatically set up that way so that you don't have to you know waste your time doing those things 
post install. So let's say that you want to, let's go ahead and uh, scroll down here. Let's say that you like all of your empty drives to be shown in the uh, file explorer. Well, we can enable that here. We can change that to uh, enable. There we go. Now you see there's all of these, all these values are set to default. They're not set to either enabled or disabled. They're, they're just set to whatever the system defaults this value to. So some of these things might be enabled by default. Some of them might not be. I know that showing empty drives is not a feature that is enabled by default. So we can change that here. A big one for me is show hidden files and folders. That is something that I always like to see. Uh, showing extensions for known file types. That is something that I also always turn on. Um, showing protected operating system files, that is something that I usually keep off. We'll go ahead and just enable it for, you know, the sake of this video here. Um, we can, you know, use small icons on the taskbar. We can uh, show the taskbar on all monitors. Um, button grouping, we can, uh, now, you, now you see here we have some multiple different options, which is literally what you would see in like the uh, taskbar properties. You can always combine, uh, you can combine when, when the taskbar is full or you can never combine. We'll go ahead and set this on never combine. Uh, showing the clock, let's say that we wanna disable that. Uh, restore Windows Photo Viewer, yes, I definitely want that. Uh, replace command prompt with Windows PowerShell, uh, sure, why not? This is again, just under this one tab. We can go to Internet Explorer, uh, we can go to Network, OneDrive, we can literally disable OneDrive. And this is a huge one here as well, under Privacy, you can uh, get rid of all of the annoying privacy settings that Windows 10 has enabled by default. So let's say that you don't want to allow apps to access your appointments or your call history, camera, I mean, look, I'm going to get rid of all this because I pretty much have it set this way on my personal Windows 10 install. So we can go ahead and disable um, app access to all of these things. Under allow telemetry, unfortunately, you cannot just disable this through this program, but you can choose different options. Normally, I believe it's set to full. Um, we can set it to basic. So you see there's this uh, enhanced one here. I think that's what it's usually set to or it's set to full. It's set to one of those where it always is going to be sending a bunch of your computer's data to Microsoft. We can go ahead and set it to basic. Uh, that way it will send the least amount of data to Microsoft. Uh, we can, um, this is another stupid one, automatic installation of sponsored apps, which is just literally... Windows 10 will it will literally install random apps from the App Store. It's really, really annoying. We can disable that from here. Um, Cortana, we'll go ahead and just disable Cortana entirely. Um, display the last username in the logon screen. Sure, why not? Um, I don't want any tips on the lock screen. I mean, there's a, a ton of things. Pre-installed OEM apps disabled, pre-installed apps disabled. You can see that there is a lot of stuff in here. Like I already mentioned, uh, user account control, um, you can, uh, you know, set up Windows Defender. You can literally disable Windows Defender if you want to. You can do the same thing with services. You can set all of these services. I think this is literally every single service on the entire system. So you can kind of, you know, set this up, uh, disable services, enable services, make services either manual or automatic. You can do the same thing under extra services here. And now for integration, uh, this is where you can integrate um, updates, drivers, and registry tweaks as well. And now let's move on to the automate tab right here. Now, this is a huge thing for me and definitely something that I want to see in action is the unattended setup. So you guys have probably seen, I've done in many, many videos on this channel in all of the unofficial Windows versions that we've taken a look at. There's been a lot of them that have an unattended setup, which is where it doesn't require any user input. It's literally just a uh, somebody, you know, whoever creates the ISO image um, adds all of the uh, information, so things like the username, the password, uh, the computer name, what workgroup or domain that the system is uh, going to be a part of, the product key. Um, it adds, you know, the, the person, whoever makes it, adds all of those things into a program like NT Light here. And then the system basically pulls from that and doesn't ask the user for anything. It just makes the whole setup a lot faster. And it definitely makes things very, very useful if you're in like a business environment, for example, and you have to do this on 50 computers. Rather than sitting there at each computer and typing everything in manually, you know, typing in like the username and your domain settings, you can just type it once into this program and then have it automatically install on all of your computers automatically. Very, very useful. Now to enable this, we have to actually enable this unattended mode up here in the actual um, NT light settings. So go ahead and change this to enable. And now you'll see that we can actually start modifying stuff in here. So let's say that uh, let's go ahead and just start off with uh, this section right here. So skipping the EULA page. 
we can uh, you know change that to true that way it will skip the eula page so for the computer name here um, we'll just call this uh, custom vm so there we go um, registered owner and registered organization we'll just put michael here organization uh, team mjd why not i haven't used that in a while um, send report to microsoft we can change that to false enable dynamic update we can change that to false and product key now i don't have a windows 10 product key on hand but if you had one if you had one for your uh, organization like a volume license key you can put that in here and it will use that product key on every machine that you install this on so definitely very very useful um ui language we can set this to english so there you go those are you know some of the options again this isn't everything but this is uh, most of the stuff that you can modify from the unattended setup right here and post setup, this is where you can add scripts and programs that you want to auto execute on you know the first login so to actually add anything to this what you have to do is go to this add button up here you can either add a file which would be a specific script or a you know program that you have that you want to integrate into this um, a command or a template we're just going to go ahead and go with a command and what you want to do is right here type the actual command and then you can add a, a parameter if you want to in that next column so let's go ahead and run winver and then we'll do uh, notepad why not so now uh, when we first log into this we're going to see winver and notepad automatically open up it's definitely very very useful and when we basically have everything configured the way that we want it uh, you know, you can obviously go back through here and double check everything if you want to, but we're just going to go ahead and hit the apply button right here um, under the finish tab. And this is where we can, you know, make the, the final selections and uh, actually create an ISO file. And we can add an ISO label, which we'll just leave it as NT Lite. Why not? And right here, it's going to show you all of the pending tasks that it's going to do. So it does actually warn us it's not recommended, apparently, to use the legacy options, skip machine OBE and skip user OBE. Instead, use the individual settings on the unattended um, settings page to define exact choices. We're just going to leave it as it is to see how this turns out. Um, you can review the uh, device checklist right here if you want to. And it's just going to tell you exactly what, is it, what it's going to do. So you can, again, go through here and, uh, you know, modify, you know, see all of the components that it's going to remove. So these are all of the uh, components right here. And it's going to tell you this is actually what it's going to do. This is where it's going to save the ISO file. So once you have everything configured to your liking, all you have to do is press this process button up here and press yes. And now it is actually going to prepare the uh, system configuration is going to actually set everything up uh, just as you selected it in the program and it's very nice again very uh it's it's more detailed than nlight was it actually shows you like step by step what it's actually doing and what it's actually uh, going to be modifying so right now it is uh, you know just uh, preparing data once it finishes that it'll actually start removing components and uh, yeah, I mean, that is that is pretty much it, guys. Now, I'm not going to actually take a look at this ISO file in today's video, because as I said, this is already a very, very long video, and I'm going to have to do a decent amount of editing to get this down to a bit of a more watchable uh, format for you guys, so you guys aren't here for an hour watching me uh, set this whole thing up. But um, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to uh, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And also be sure to uh, drop me a comment down below letting me know what you guys think of this process, if you guys want to try this out for yourselves. And be sure to let me know if you guys want to see a follow-up video like we did with Nlight, where we actually take a look at the custom edition of Windows 10 that we just created here. Um, be sure to let me know down in, in the comments below if you guys want to see that, along with any other video suggestions or ideas that you guys have, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.